But is there anything else scandalous and fun that we can talk about before we start breaking fights down? Anything uh, on the uh, chopping block that besides that? There's some cuts with uh, you know Elias Theodoro and Justin Willis. Oh sh- yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. Who got caught? I, I, I mean, I, I, again, not to flog a dead horse, but I've been working really hard, so I've been scouring the internet. Uh, but I do see headlines about a lot of. UFC cuts. Who actually has been cut from the roster? Uh, Justin Willis, 4-0 in the UFC before losing to Curtis Blades in March. According to Errol Hawani, Willis was asked to take a fight against Walt Harris and cannot agree to it on a fight date. Apparently, he was trying to lose the gut. Bring this picture up. Bring up bring up Justin Willis's gut that makes him unfriendly as a draw and Dana was not willing to wait and moved on from the man who beat Alan Crowder, Chase Sherman, and Mark Hunt in his promotional farewell. Win over Mark Hunt in his last fight? Mark Hunt's last fight in the UFC, yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Mark Hunt's last fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was a good fight. It wasn't bad. I mean, he he beat Mark Hunt at his own game. You know, he outstruck him on the feet. He outboxed him for the most part. Pumped the jab a lot. But still, you know, Mark Hunt, as we know, is a devastating striker. Um, So that's... That's an interesting one, especially given the landscape and the depth of the heavyweight division. Elias Theodoru, um, yeah, that's an, that's a hard one. I mean, you're talking about his gut there. I mean, Mark Hunt's gut yeah. isn't much better than Justin Willis's, even though tied to Avasa, who fights this weekend, in, uh, sorry, next weekend in Chicago. I'll be there for that one. But uh, even though he was talking shit about Willis as well, because they were meant to fight ever since Willis beat Mark Hunt, and Ty to Avasa was going on about Willis's belly, you know, and I love Ty, he's awesome. He keeps saying he'll do the show, we're going to get it going. Yeah, anyway, so Justin Willis is gone. Um, also, uh, I, Theodorus, uh, let's see, he 8-3 and three in the UFC. Yeah. Just the fights never said, almost like the biggest thing about Elias Theodorus is that he was hot and that he was a ring card boy for Invicta. That was the biggest thing that sort of stuck out about his career. He, he had a great record, though. Eight and three in the UFC is a pretty good record. Um, well, here's the thing. Contractually, this is the way it works with the UFC contracts. They can cut you anytime you lose, right? So if you lose a fight, and it sucks. You know, I mean, I'm not talking about everybody's contract, but... For the lower level guys, most of the way the pay st- uh, structure is that you get half to show. You win the fight, you get another half, you know. So if you lose the fight, yeah, you might have got your ass kicked. You might be embarrassed. You've lost the fight in front of the world. You lose half your money. But then also, you are open to being cut contractually from the UFC as well. So there's a, there's always that uh, element of doubt lingering for you. Now, yeah, the pressure sucks. I like to you don't yeah yeah tons of pressure as well that was why who was it that had a fight recently and when they won they started crying their eyes out in the octagon and i totally got it it was because you know i mean the fucking pressure man i think the guy had lost three in a row but it was an exciting fight i forget who it was anyway i'm going off topic elias theodore listen i like elias he's a smart guy he's a really really nice guy as well and when you speak to him and you spend time with him it's impossible not to like the guy um so I'm going to choose my words really carefully. I mean, he lost his last fight. He's, he, he's got a cerebral style. You know, he, he's definitely a tactician. Is it the most exciting style? No. And I say that with the greatest of respect. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm, I'm trying to be as nice as I possibly can. Uh, is he a tough nut to crack? Yes. Um, hence his record you know I mean he only got beaten up until the loss to Derek Brunson by uh, Thiago Santos and then there was one other that was good as well Brad so yeah Brad um, Tavares you know pardon Brad Tavares oh yeah Brad Tavares <laughs> Thiago Santos who's fighting for the light heavyweight belt and then he lost to Derek Brunson no shame losing to those guys and of course he had eight victories as well Harrington um, right, Harrington go but at the same time go <laughs> 
Uh, so the point I was making was the third guy to be cut, Mike, Wilson Hayes. He fought Demetrius Johnson for the title not too long ago. Is that a signal that the UFC is trying to get rid of the flyweight division? Hmm. You're right. That is a very, very good point because I believe now, not that I, you know, obsess over these things or perhaps I'm just really smart, but I believe now there's only 13 flyweights left on the roster. Wilson Hayes fought for the belt not too long ago. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he's being difficult to deal with. Um, we're jumping around all over the place. So there's a number of cuts. Elias Theodoru, is it the most exciting style? <sighs> no. But is he a, ta is he a technician? Is he clearly talented yes you know uh, has he had success yes but he did lose his last fight and i feel like the fact that in his home country of canada the fight was in ottawa i was commentating he was getting booed that's never a good sign that's yeah. never a good sign so i think maybe and it's not for me to comment on the ufc's actions they certainly don't consult me or you know tell me the reasons why i'm speculating but that can't have helped um it's a shame. He's a young man. He's talented. He's good. Uh, he, he'll still have a bright future. He's very, very smart as well. Wilson Hayes in the fly with him. I don't know. Here's what I'll say. You look online, you see all these websites and the hypothesizing as to why they've done this and all the rest of it. And they're all trying to come up with smart reasons. They're trying to, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to look for an ulterior motive. Right. I don't think there is one. I don't think there is one. I think it's mainly a case of... They've got over 500 fighters on the roster right now, you know, and you got to keep it fresh. You got to have new blood coming in, you know, and they've been around for a while. Wilson Hayes has been around for a while. Theodoru has been around for a while. And you know, some of these people go on. Sorry, I, I, not to cut you off, but you got to uh, sometimes it's literally the best thing for them. You know, uh, Wilson Hayes, UFC title challenger right now, he has that. He can go to 1FC, Bellator, wherever else. He's going to have, number one, a better chance of winning. Number two, he's probably going to get a pretty lucrative deal because of his experience in the UFC. Whereas the UFC is going like, okay, well, what are we going to do with you? You you lost for the, the flyweight title. We don't even have a flyweight title anymore, right? Or, uh, you know, or it seems as if they're getting rid of the division altogether. So I feel like they... There's not much upside there. Why are they going to continue to pay you a lot of money when what what is really the thing there? There's no story to be built for you. Yeah, no, no, no absolutely. And then on top of that, and, and I'll stick with Elias because he's the guy that I'm most familiar with. And again, as I said, I, I, I'm I'm a big fan of Elias as a person. As a fighter, he's very, very good. And he's very competent and he's very good and he has good success. But, you know, most of us a person. He's a great guy. But having a good manager and having success... He's probably not the cheapest guy ever, you know? And the UFC at the end of the day, and I'm not defending their actions, I'm just giving... you got to look at both sides, you know? They're a business. They're a business. And, and, and if they've got to pay out this amount of money, I don't know what his last purse was. Maybe you can look that up quickly, Harrington. But they've got to justify paying that. And if they can't justify paying the purse for whatever, you know... Uh, you know, w w whatever calculation they use to quantify, you know, whether or not somebody's worth their purse. You know, they, they, they have ways of figuring that out. You know what I mean? They, they know the brand worth that each fighter brings to the table. And if, and unfortunately, it, it's a sad reality that it is a business. And if it doesn't make economic sense to pay, keep paying a person, then they're not going to do it. Um, Harrington, you were going to say? Yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, no, go on, Harrington. I could tell you were just about to come in with Theodora's purse, I'm assuming. I mean, call me smart, but uh, call me a people person. Call me uh, intuitive or call me wrong. Which one is it? $81,000 for his last fight that he won, 38 to show, 38 to win, 5,000 fighter incentive pay. He claims he makes more money from sponsorship and endorsement than from UFC pay. I'm sure he does. That's not crazy. We have podcast advertisers. I know how much they fucking pay. It's there's not a crazy thing that he would make money from wearing sexy underwear. Yeah, yeah, no, no, one hundred percent. And it's not a ridiculous amount of money either. I mean, I, I would, I'd say he's worth that money. I, I would. Um, Agreed. It's a shame. Listen, whatever it is, maybe there's things going on. Here's another thing as well. You know, when the when these journalists go out there and they write these stories and they're looking for, a lot of the time because it's a popular theme, it's to, they want to shit on the UFC. You know, because it's a popular story to write. It's a popular trend to follow. It's a popular 
narrative to put out there. Well, it's an Sometimes easy click. It, when you when you take down the yeah, man, if you're if you're if, come on, you're like, yeah, of course, man. Yeah, fuck the UFC. You're looking out for the fighter. Yeah. You're looking out for the little man. But they're also just trying to get clicks, which equal money for them. They're journalists, right, or whatever whatever blog. So they're essentially yeah. just taking the easier route to getting more people to click on their horseshit. Yeah, no, no, exactly. They're doing the exact same thing that they're accusing the UFC of being guilty of in some ways. But, uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, and then also, also, I was just about to say, things going on behind the scenes that people aren't privy to. Mm. Unless, and unless the fighters, you know, they throw a tantrum and they come out there and they say, well, here's what really happened. We'll never know. We'll never know. Because fighters generally don't speak about that. The managers stay professional and there's things going on. I'll say it. You know, my theory, and it's clearly an assumption and a theory, is, you know, sometimes you got to trim some of the fat and you got to bring in new blood. And if you're going to bring in new blood, as I say, you got to trim the fat. And I don't mean fat as a disrespectful term to any of those fighters. I wish them all the best uh, with their endeavors. Elias, Wilson Hayes, Justin Willis, three guys that can still fight, they can still throw down, and they're all pretty much still in the prime. So I wish them all the best. And it's a shame. It is, but you know the UFC haven't come this far. They didn't. They're not worth so much money if they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Yeah. And it's a sad reality. And I'm not on the end of that reality. If I was, I'd feel maybe more strongly. Uh, you know, I could be very impartial right here. I can sit here like, um, I'll say it, the UFC employee that I still am. You know what I mean? But I actually mean what I'm saying. I'm not saying this to toe the line with the UFC. It's just the reality. It's business. It's economics. And sometimes there's victims in that. And unfortunately for these guys right now, for whatever reasons the, the UFC has got, and as I say, I don't know what they are, but I'm sure there is some very, very good reasons. It's a sad reality, and I wish them the best. And I, I can't give a more well-balanced, fair opinion than that. You know, and I think that's fair. Not if if I'm Eddie Hearn, he should be pissed because if I'm a, if I'm a fighter, I'm just gonna go look at the way Anthony Joshua's been managed, man. Look at the way he's been managed, and you know what pisses me off? I think Anthony Joshua posted a picture of him and his team. He has 19 team members. What's happening here? What's everyone's role here? Why are all you over here in New York? Why the fuck are you back in the locker room? Why do you have 27 corner men? And why are you letting Eddie Hearn dictate your career? Here's the other thing. Fought in the zone. I, no one watched that thing. If he would have knocked Andy Ruiz out in a minute, we're not even talking about it right now. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, man. It's just, but again, Andy Ruiz Jr., great story. I, and. The other thing, you know, he was, all, I think he was only a, my, uh, a plus 2,000, which isn't, you know, the, it's, don't get me wrong, it's one of the biggest upsets in history, but it's not Buster Douglas odds. So I, I think your boy Ruiz made around 4 million for this fight. Did he make seven? So he made seven. I think Joshua made around 20, right? 20 or 30. And then in the rematch, obviously way bigger deal. <laughs> Look at that picture. Look at all his teammates. Dude, it's an entire football team. In his locker room, like, thanks for meeting my teammates. Tell me what all your jobs are. Can, it, can we go through that lineup and figure out what the fuck everybody does? Do you think your entourage is too big? <laughs> 23 guys, 23 guys. What are you doing, dude? What the fuck are you doing? But, great story at the expense of Anthony Joshua. Because again, the house always, always wins. Always, always wins. And you let the promoter fuck you around, man. Go, now. Nah, we'll just fight this guy. It's not a big deal. Well, you don't know fighting. You don't know fighting. It is a big deal. Anybody can lose. Same thing. And this isn't me. You know, oh, Brent's a fair weather fan. I'll be honest with you. When Showtime went, hey, Wilder's fighting Luis. Or, again, I went, bad idea. Bad idea. Do not edit this out. Do not edit this out. This is how I feel about it. Bad idea. Why? Exhibit A, Joshua Ruiz Jr. Not that Wilder can't beat him, but the longer we go without these huge fights of Fury and Joshua, the more likely these guys are gonna lose. I know, but he just smoked Brazil. Don't care. Bad idea. Southpaw, Cuban, fought before, was winning all the rounds for the one we got knocked out in. He's seen Wilder's style. He's been in there with him. 
He knows that that right hand is the touch of death. It's a stylist, stylistically, Lewis is a nightmare of a matchup. And so for Wilder, he wants to fight the best of the best. That's fine. Doesn't make sense to me. What's the upside? Well, is it a great fight? That's a phenomenal fight. It's a tougher fight than Joshua or Fury have had in a long ass time. Notice none of them are barking up that Luis tree. They 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 wanted Luis wanted to fight them. Remember he wanted to fight uh, Joshua, and they were like, "Oh, he demanded too much money." That's from Hearn's team. I don't know if that's true. I don't. I, I feel like Ortiz would have probably took a, the chance because he's a great matchup against Joshua. I hate to tell you guys, Ortiz probably beats Joshua now. Does he beat uh, uh, Does he beat Fury? No. Does he beat Wilder? He was beating him when they fought before. That was the, one of the, my favorite heavyweight fights of all time. That's a scary, scary fight. I just don't see the upside of a guy you already beat and you're having problems before. And then looming around are Fury and Joshua. But what they did announce is, oh, and this is this is interesting to me, so they did announce while they announced the Ortiz fight is we're guaranteed to get the Fury match next year. It's like, well, well yeah, no, that's cool, man. Uh, that's cool. He has to get through Ortiz again. But otherwise, who gives a fuck about that? Why not just wait? I don't need to see Wilder fight Ortiz right now. I saw it. Oh my God, thank God we got past that Cuban dude who we have no idea how old he is. Thank God he got past that. I, dude, just just wait. Just Fury's fighting who knows? God knows who's fighting on fucking ESPN. We won't watch it. I will because I'm a fan, but most people won't. So, but why not wait? You can wait it out, bro. I'd much rather you guys wait and then fight in January the Wild or, or uh, Fury rematch. That'd be sick. But they go, hey, it's so funny. They go, hey, Ortiz Wilder too. And after that's Fury. It's like. Dude, that's a, I mean, oof. Jesus Christ. That's tough, man. That's such a tough fight. It's such a scary fight. But again, oh, Wild was scared of Joshua. Wild was scared of Fury. No, no one's scared of anybody. That Ortiz fight doesn't make sense. Well, watch it though. It's a great fucking fight. It's gonna be interesting to see how Wilder adapts and, you know, he was getting outboxed. It's the toughest fight of his life. Yeah, he was in the seventh round, right? Yeah. Fury, Fury, Fury was game plan and footwork and was just a kind of outbox him, had more tools in the shed. Ortiz was, it, it was just like, dude. That was a scary fight. And and you could tell Wilder like was waiting to land. Things weren't connecting. And finally, by the grace of Allah, he landed that fucking right hand. But yeah, that was a crazy fight for sure. But one where you're like, woo! Thank God that's out of the way. And Wilder goes, nah, it ain't out of the way. Let's go back there. Let's go back. But, uh, you know, for for Wilder, this is what makes him great. You know, he goes, oh, that guy was beating me for a few rounds. I think I can do better than, than that. Probably the worst matchup. I hate to tell you guys this. This might not be a popular opinion in the UK. Joshua is a much easier fight for him than Ortiz. That's just facts. Ortiz is a complete nightmare. Southpaw, Cuban, a chin. Nightmare stylistically for uh, Wilder. Joshua's a much simpler fight for him. It's just what it is, man. But you know who's a nightmare for all these guys? Tyson Fury. Does it sit in the pocket? Great movement. Makes you fight his fight. Hard to hit. Good cardio. Huge nightmare. Outboxes Joshua. We saw what he did with Wilder. Ortiz doesn't really hit him. He's, he's not knocking Ortiz out, but he'll beat him by decision. Clean slate. Might lose two rounds to Ortiz. That's how good fucking Wild uh, Fury is, man. He's so good. He's so, so good. Think about the fight with Wilder. Wilder's amazing. Wilder really only touched him three times. You know, like that counted. And But when he touched him, he has, he's the most powerful boxer in the planet. So when he touched him, he went down. Outside that, if those knockdowns don't happen, 
He got sh straight up outclassed. It's like good Furious, man. He's fighting on ESPN Ocho uh, next Saturday at fucking three in the morning. Why? Not because of Fury. You don't think Fury wants to fight Joshua and Wilder? Of course they do. They announced the, the rematch. Of course he wants that fight. Some promoter goes, hey, hey, I'm this dumbass that's never fought before. You make more money doing this on ESPN Ocho. <sighs> but at least we're going to get the fight. Hopefully. Hopefully everyone's on eggshells now. The house always wins, man. And sometimes the house is a fucking Cuban Southpaw. We've had issues with before. It makes zero sense, but I'll watch it and I'll talk about it, but I'll be terrified. He's the, he's the boogeyman of the division. He's the boogeyman of the division. N name one person who called out Ortiz. Everyone's like, mm -hmm, and they just go, hey. well, he lost that one time. It's like, yeah, we know, but he was winning most of the rounds. I, I hate that Wilder fight Ortiz. That is, now more I get, I'm getting upset about it. That is a terrifying fight, man. Terrifying fight. I feel like they think it's gonna be like Sturm. He's gonna come in like out of shape for the second time, but that's not Ortiz. He comes in like a monster. He, and he's downloaded the data. He's been in there. He is, he is a smart boxer, man. He's gonna learn from his mistakes. Wilder has his work cut out for him, man. Think about his path right now. He has Ortiz, who he's already fought before. Beating a guy a second time is tougher than the first time. So you have this or motivated Ortiz, this fucking Cuban Missile Crisis you gotta figure out. That you've beat before, but dude, you won by the hair of your fucking teeth because you landed a right hand. Phenomenal fight, best one in his career. So you beat him. And then you got Fury looming in the dark, who went to a draw. But most people think that Wilder won, and he won. But he and not only let all right. Let's say you do do agree with it's the draw. That's fine because the knockdowns and those those right hands and that left hook they landed. That's cool. But if we just go off paper on who won rounds and who got outboxed and landed more shots, Fury's team. There's not much to change there for them. Oh, dude, quit playing grab ass in those later rounds, and you're gonna coast to a win. But he, you know, he's Fury, so he played with Dynamite and he lost. When I lost, I mean, it was a draw, but he lost the fight, the body of work that he's working on, he, that got annihilated. So, if you're Wilder's team, man, the comps they have him, this is why you gotta be a fucking Wilder fan. He's going against all odds. Against, he's not gonna be the favorite in that rematch against Fury. The one against Ortiz, he's probably gonna be a slight favorite, which again, I always bet on the underdog usually. That's not a terrible bet. He is the hardest. Name someone with a hard pathway going, going through to be for greatness besides Wilder. Ortiz rematch, what are you doing? Fury, you fought him before. Fury outclassed you, but you, it was a draw. It's crazy, man. I don't get why people hate on the guy. I don't get it. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.